<laughs> Welcome everybody to the Edmunds Racing Preview Show. We're here with Toby and Trent, um, who are kind enough to join us to work through their runners coming up over Friday and Saturday. We've got the Gold Coast meeting um, back on a Friday here at our home track. And Saturday, the Winter Carnival continues at Eagle Farm with uh, the guys having some really nice chances and some, and some good races there. Um, Tobe, a bit of rain around, mate, uh, around the home track anyway. You're looking like you'll be, should be a pretty, uh, pretty wet track at the Gold Coast. And uh, Brisbane seems to have fed pretty well. They haven't had much rain there at all. Yeah, so the track here tomorrow will be quite affected. About 30 mil of rain in the last um, 24 hours. 33, actually, I think it's a bit more than that. Um, bit of sun out this morning, so it could dry a bit, but I'd say this track's pretty um, wintry at the moment and worn, uh, so it'll probably play a little, um, um, it's have to have to be quite wet in the heavy range for sure. Sure, so you'll be getting getting sort of looking for horses drawn drawn wide at the Gold Coast won't be too much of a, a negative? Oh, they can draw anywhere to start with, you just need to find the right part of the track um, when you when you in challenging position like so normally in the middle of the track the outside of the track is the best place when it's when it's wet as it is most times but um eagle farm i think uh you know, more rain the better they didn't water it at all last week so um and it can it can cope with a fair bit um so i think it'll be okay it should, should race fairly good yeah perfect it's, you'd think they'd be putting some on some water anyway i don't think they've had much rain um trendy boy um mate sort of the group won last week, but you've got to kick on and keep training winners and, and look forward to the next week. It's it's uh, an exciting, exciting weekend ahead. I mean, obviously with the roses and things, but um, I suppose uh, just wanted to touch on, on the Magic Millions yearlings that are rolling through too with an, with an eye to the future, with um, the first sort of yearlings slash rising two-year-olds coming through the system, mate. Some some nice prospects amongst them. Yeah, it certainly is. Uh... You know, we sort of, everyone probably says the same thing every year, but we've bought super well um some of the colts here that we've got standing probably the best colts that have been through the barn for forever i think you know there's probably the highest quality lot of boys that we've had come through some really ripping fillies that hopefully get up and go early they look they look to be early so um we really concentrated on trying to get that precocious early speed um in the stable so we can figure in the in the magic millions and the early two-year-old races obviously but, um, yeah, you know, nice. They've all broken, broken in beautifully, and you know, really happy with them. A couple of them having their second look, probably not far off doing a little bit of three quarter pace. Um, yeah, super, super bunch. I suppose after the after the next sort of month, um, Toby will uh, will better sit down as a group, or you guys will sit down and sort of map out which ones you think might be sort of programmed for the earlier races, and which ones you're going to give a bit more time to. Yeah, you sort of you get that feel for them, um, even even as early. You know, some of them are you know a little backward. You got to kick them around, and and um, but there's quite a few of these ones actually jump jumping straight into the bridle and carrying themselves well. So um, I like I like that um, going forward. Um, those ones that are a little bit a little bit back, we're happy to wait for. But certainly um, the bunch we've seen so far, uh, I don't think there's too many of them that aren't, aren't looking um, like they're going to carry themselves pretty well early. I think. Winning Rupert Philly there, Brucey, that's uh, jumped out of the ground at a second prep. So he's hoping. The winning Rupert Philly, oh, mate, you've got a special interest there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mate, I'm so excited. I love There's nothing like those babies rolling through. Just uh, 100%. excitement about the future, that is for sure. All right, guys, let's get excited uh, about the Gold Coast Friday tomorrow. It's um, likely to be in the heavy range, as we mentioned. There's an eight race card there at the Gold Coast. Um, the guys have nine acceptances across six races, kicking off. In race three, it's a maiden 1,400 metre race. Um, a couple of live chances here, Trent. Uh, number four, applause drawn 13, Robbie Frad aboard. Um, now he's had five starts and just the one placing, but I think you uh, you guys sort of think he'll appreciate the 1,400 metres. Uh, and I suppose just a question mark about the rain affected track. Yeah, drawn horribly again, but I been steady. I was really disappointed with him at Jersey the other day. I thought he nearly win um and he went horrible so we've gone a month between runs um work leading in has been has been okay actually um you know his final gallop before his last run was fair and he raced that way but his work prior to that had been 
you know, showing us that he was going to win pretty quickly. Um, and as I said, that's why we've gone a month between runs, just giving him a small freshen up and he's shown that he's sort of back on track. So I'd be confident that he could knock him over had he drawn a gate. The rail's going to be out a long way here on, um, I think it's about seven and a half metres or something on Friday. So going to need a little bit of luck. Probably just have to follow the right horse through and um, he should prove hard to beat if he, if he performs. He, he likes the Gold Coast race as well here as well. So um, if he drew a soft, big chance. Heavy track, mate. Sorry, did you touch on that? Um, I'll throw to you a bit. You have a red ransom mare by Epaulet. What do, what do you reckon? Should I thought would have thought he'd get through it? Certainly, red ransom. I'm, I haven't. Uh, the epaulets might be a little bit unexposed on it. Um, but yeah, the red ransom part of it, you'd think. Um, I suppose we don't know. We'll find out, won't we? And uh, Robbie Fred from 13 hopefully can navigate to the best part of the track from there anyway. That's probably the positive with an outside barrier. Yeah, yeah exactly right. And uh, Managua in the same race, uh, Tobe, um, you really liked him going into his debut and he, and he ran well. He, he ran fourth. He was sort of off the bit chasing for a fair way, but he stuck on gamely and, uh, and held, his, held his ground in fairness to him. You'd, you'd think 1,400 metres would be ideal. Um, he is second up, though, onto a heavy track. Um, what, do you, what are your thoughts on him rolling into Friday? I'm suggesting we might wait for him. Um, this, I can't see it being any other than heavy, even, even if we get a good day today. So um, we may just wait. Uh, we're ready to win. Um, didn't mind his run the other day. They were just a little sharp. Him 1400 appears to be the right journey. So we may just wait because of the, because of the track, I'd say. Sure. So just looking for a better track second up. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Perfect. All right. Good as gold. Rolling into race four is a benchmark 64 over 900 metres. Um, Archer Park represented here with uh, with a mare called of course she will who um, who who's been good at home and working well at home but on on race day she's just disappointed Trent um, she is obviously it's slightly back in distance here um, can we see her do the big 180 degree turnaround and form thinkers go on uh, however if it stays in the heavy range she won't run um, she's won a race on the heavy as a young horse but well, reports she was sort of a default winner there. She was just up and precocious and, and too good for them. Um, so if it's heavy, possible, oh, well, probable non-runner. And as, it, as, as of now, as of yet, it looks like it's going to remain heavy. So she may be saved for next week. Good as gold. And just, so she's obviously shown ability and just putting the blinkers on to hopefully get her to show her best for the Archer Park team there. Yeah, level of works. Nothing, nothing wrong with how she's working. She's going good at home, but... Um, She's very early two-year-old. I think she won the fit, and I think it's called at Toowoomba, the first two-year-old race um, of the season as a baby. And so she sort of needs to start winning again. Otherwise, um, you know, she might be off the stud pretty quick. All righty, understood. Okay, race five is a benchmark 68 over 1,200 metres. The 2K Thoroughbreds team represented here, towed by Unconditional. Uh, he was a, gr a nice winner, a really dominant winner, really, at Ipswich last time. With uh, Nathan uh, exactly on board, <laughs> he's got the uh, two kilo claim here. The horse has performed on a soft track, and um, mate, we might be. Uh, you think he'd perform well again there tomorrow? Uh, tomorrow, yes. Yeah, so it's going good actually. I, I didn't mind it's win the other day, he wrote, and he rode it reasonably well too, Nathan. Um, yep. So he gets his chance, gets his chance to uh, ride another good race, um, and it's trained nicely at home. So it's got as good a chance as any of them. Um, and drawn beautifully, so you know, get the right run as long as he gets the right part of the track, it'll be very hard to beat. Very good, I like him in that race, I like him a lot. In the same race, uh, is Isa Rocket for the Sedge Ho team. She's drawn 10, Robbie Frad aboard. Uh, Trent, we mentioned her last week, she she traveled really well on debut, um, at the Sunshine Coast there for the for the stable and just didn't let down. Um, at the time, I think he said, Listen, she's who works at home has been better than that and also just the extra time in the stable will probably probably will just um have a have a ride on song for for this race at the gold coast tomorrow yeah exactly i think she's improved in size um questionable as to whether we run on the heavy and she's drawn half tardy as well so sort of umming and ahhing at the moment um i think she's probably she's ready to run a, a much bolder race than what she did first up so want to make uh, every use of it if we can. We don't want to send her around just for the sake of, of running her and wasting a run. So we'll have a look at that race. 
during the day and uh, make a call pretty late in the morning. Perfect. All right, good as goal. Well, good luck to the Sejinho team there. She has placed twice from three runs on soft tracks, so she, uh, she has handled it in the past, it seems. Um, race six is a class two over 1,800 metres. Tobe, I thought this man, Nymeria for Archer Park, she was knocking on the door for a win. Um, I was actually very keen on her at this at her next start after her last run. Drawn seven, Robbie Frad. I thought she was terrific last time out. And um, I suppose the only question now is with the, with the rain, um, you know, she, she's run twice on soft tracks for, 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 um, for, for zero, for duck gigs. Yeah. Um, what are your thoughts on her for Friday? Yeah, certainly. I, I agree. It's um, funnily enough, she funnily enough she races best at Ipswich, where we where we sent her. I think she's had a run at home here, where she has gone fairly, and and Toowoomba was awful. Back to Ipswich, she she performed super. So we possibly might might wait for her if, if she hasn't got wet track form as well. So we need to look at that and make a decision tomorrow morning probably. She hasn't had a crack on the heavy, but her mother. I was looking through a pedigree earlier this morning. Her mother. Dan Zero Mayor, I think, had a couple of starts on there for a win in a few placings. But, um, you know, and that day that she raced on the soft at home at the Gold Coast, we tried to punch her up on speed or be very close, and she races terribly doing that. She's better left alone and let build through her gears. But, uh, on weather watch again as to whether we run, and she's second emergency, so if there's no scratching, she may not get a run anyhow. Yeah, understood. Yeah. Okay, we'll look out for her. if she if she lines up, she's a nice a nice chance that the guys think um, she can run well on the on the surface. Um, race seven is a class four over fourteen hundred meters. A couple of runners engaged here. Uh, Forza number six. Will he? Uh, he's also engaged today, guys. Will he run? He he's running today at Grafton, so he Excellent. will come out of t tomorrow. We'll just, but we'll... Uh, just leave him in for now, just in case something untoward happens and they go to graph and the races are called off or something. So that's, that's why he's staying in. And say I see you is a definite runner. Definite runner for the Archer Park team. Perfect. Another one that was uh, a super second at Ipswich last time out. Um, distance should suit. Has one on soft and heavy from three. From, um, from the, her three wins, or his three wins. Um, one's been on soft, one's been on heavy. So, um, yeah, seems like he'd relish the going tomorrow. We've been waiting for a, a soft track like this for him for a long time. I thought he should have won the other day at um, Ipswich. He just had no, you know, nothing taking him into the race and ended up getting shuffled back further than you would have liked. Um, flashed home. I've got no doubt should have won. The race, a couple of starts ago on a heavy eight, he pulled up with the thumps. Um, and I thought he'd win that night too when we got the right track conditions. But from barrier two, horses going super. Um, up to 1,400, no concern whatsoever. Very disappointed if he didn't put these away tomorrow. Perfect. All right, nice push there from Trent for the Archer Park team. Uh, good luck with Say I See You team. Uh, Archer Park have another runner in, in race eight, Tobe, the class one, 1,400 metres. He's drawn 20 here, Cuban Mint. Um, obviously, a few emergencies. So they'll come in a few. Anthony Allen engaged. Um, ran okay at Ipswich last time, ran six, got home well. Um, has placed once uh, from two starts on a soft track and sort of you'd think it'll appreciate the distance. Um, but it's an open race. It's the last race of the card, of course. It's the, uh, the last leg of the quaddy. They're always big open races. Um, yeah. But he's a live chance. Yep. Look, it's actually, it goes a bit, but its run was okay. It switched the other day, got a long way out of its ground and, and ran home nicely. I'd suggest, um, even though we've drawn poorly, and it's a terrific type of a, uh, Philly, this Philly, it's it's um, got good scope. It's uh, it actually looks looks like a quality horse. So I'd I'd suggest only a matter of time before it kicks into gear, you know. And he works um, the place down, but doesn't. Yeah, hasn't it works. Race day, does she? We popped her through the barriers again this morning to help her, help her begin. You know, she's she was slow out the other day and didn't didn't muster her speed at all. Um, Twenty alleys and it is is a concern, but look if it gets some sort of luck in the first. You know, in when they get the settling positions, if it can get on the back of something, it'll it'll run well. I'm sure it can. Mossman Mare in the wet, boys. Yep, they love them. Yeah, they love it. Yeah, good to know. Good to know. Lovely. The nice to know that you, you guys follow the pedigree side of things too, eh? In terms of uh, whether they handle the wet too, which is really interesting, guys. Good on you. Um, just a quick plug for sports bet while we're here, team. Obviously, the the winter carnival's in full swing. We're just about to touch on a ripping eagle farm card. Um, for all those owners, our owners, um, 
that have runners engaged, please make sure you give Clint Chipsy a call. Uh, the bottom of the screen here, he is rolling out the red carpet for all our owners. And, um, you know, what you're what uh, the rest of the market's been subjected to in terms of prices, you're going to get a lot better with Sportsbet um, if you're an owner of one of these runners. So uh, I do um, encourage you to, to touch base with Clint um, if, if you feel like having a bet on one of your charges over the weekend. Not so light, nice, lots of nice live chances. Um, I think there's a few nice uh, each-way bets to be had. Eagle Farm Saturday is on a good four, as we mentioned. It was um, pretty, pretty firm there last week um, and expect about the same this week, it's a nine race card and the guys have four acceptances across four races and, and four really nice chances kicking off in race two. It's a Fleas and Mares benchmark 85, 1300 meter race. Number seven, she is The Pines, drawn 13 for Robbie Fradd and Sportsbet Trent have put her up a $4 favourite. Interesting. Um, I would be, you know, she should run well in a race like this. Um, Eagle Farm going there for the first time is a little bit tricky and a little bit of a concern. Draws horribly. Uh, doesn't show a great deal of early speed any, in any case. Um, so I don't think that's going to matter a great deal. Current speed maps sort of have not a huge amount of pressure in the event in any case. So uh, going to need a little bit of luck. She'll settle in the second half of the field. Seemingly going well. Um, level of work at home is always quite sharp. She's a terrific track worker. I would have loved to have seen her probably just drawn inside half of the field um, so we don't have to drag her right back. Hopefully she would have been able to just sort of take a midfield or just a little bit worse a midfield spot. So needs to get on the back of something that's sort of going to take her a long way. Um, if she can do that, then she'll let rip. She's going great. Just drawn very tricky and um, actually races against Winter Passage again who beat her last start. So I think uh, Winter Passage goes up a stack in weight and we're down on 57 and... Um, Hopefully we can turn the tables. Yeah, and Winter Passage, I thought, had an absolute dream split last time as well and could yeah. go away and go away on us. I can, I can just see the Ian and Kathy Matheson colours flashing down the outside at Eagle Farm, like just like last weekend with Tire Zone, mate. Um, she'll be rattling late and uh, hopefully a little bit of early pace would help her a lot, won't it, you know, in the race. That'll be a big deal. Yeah, exactly right. All right, race four, looking forward to this race. It's a listed race, the Del Rello 1,200 metres for two-year-olds, Archer Park. She'd have some nice uh, nice prospects and their colours running around this weekend. Headed by number seven, Smart and Sexy, drawn for Robbie Frad on Tobe, a $5 pick, and she had a flashing light on her uh, on the back of her last, uh, last start performance. Yeah, so she's drawn good this week to, to you know, if she begins, she's, she's a little bit tardy at the barriers as well. So if she begins, she can be, you know, a length of two or three closer. Um, give that chance to finish off. We don't want to be, um, we don't want that track profile to uh, get away from us, if you know what I mean. So um, I'd suggest if we can be a bit closer tomorrow or Saturday, sorry, she's going to be finishing quite hard and, and um, work beautiful on Tuesday morning. Um, those, those three horses all went out basically together and, and galloped up nicely. So, um, Gets a good chance tomorrow on Saturday in a really uh, open sort of listed race. So a bit of black type for that met that filly be great as a two-year-old. That certainly would be a so she's a black uh, type current, win that is. Yeah, yeah, she's got some black type, but more black type the better, mate. More black type yeah. the better. But the big bold one will be lovely, and she's a uh, at the moment anyway four dollar fifty favourite with uh, with uh, sports bet, which I think she represents pretty good, pretty good odds yeah. still. I think she was enormous last time. From, from well back in the field against the, against the pattern of the race. All right, race seven, group two, the Roses, 2,200 metres. Trent Vanagirl lines up for the family and friends and clients of the stable. She's drawn 13. Uh, Brad Stewart takes the ride as he, as he did in the uh, Pam O'Neill. They've put her up a $2.50 favourite here. Um, this, of course, would be pretty much Oaks Day, right? She'd be running in the Oaks. This is the, the, the Oaks equivalent now, I suppose. Um, because the Oaks has been dropped off the, off the calendar for the COVID year, but um, mate, she's been in prime form. How she how she uh, held together between her last win and, and now? Yeah, can't fault her at all. Um, barrier thirteen probably means that we're going to have to ride her in a similar manner, I would say. But that's no bother. When you do ride her steady, she lets rip and, and lets rip hard. I think that the closer you ride her. She's still effective, but it just takes her finish away. And then when you ride her 
you know, with a smother and nice and steady early, she can build. And once she gets to her top, she really comes hard. So um, maybe a little bit more tempo in this race as well compared to um, the Pam O'Neill a fortnight ago, which should suit her also. But um, 1,800 metres certainly holds no concern. She's an Eagle Farm winner, so we know she handles the track. Um Certainly, she is the one that um, they've all got to beat. Kira Ma, David Eustace Horse, Sky Horse ran good in the Gun Sind against the boys three weeks ago. Um, form out of that Gun Sind was also sort of had Banner Girl form with uh, Super Giant and Ballistic Boy filling the first two placings. Ballistic Boy's gone on then to win the Rough Habit last week. Super Giant ran another good race. So I would, certainly wouldn't be swapping our girl for any in the race. Um, goes there you know, equally as good as what she did last start. and Hopefully she can produce the same effort on race day and be very hard to beat again. Um, great to knock a group race off with her before we send her to the paddock. Yeah, good stuff. Now, all the best there to all the owners. Apologise. I think I said 2,200 metres there. It's 1,800 metres. So uh, not a massive step up in distance, but a group two race for a, for a highly promising filly in the stable, Vanagil. Good luck to all the owners. Um, the lucky last on the card is race nine, the Dane Ripper, another group two race, Tobe. Um, over 1,400 metres, you have Winter Bride engaged here. Uh, drawn 11 with Robbie Frad aboard. Um, she was luckless in the, in the Stradbroke and, and really ran well, um, which would give you confidence that she'll run the distance right out, right out, which is probably just the only query, you know, before before last week. Yeah, so that was a query 12 months ago and, and we haven't tried it at that distance since. Um, so, you know, that was going to be a last run last week and we just thought... There's one, one more group too for, for Phillies and Mares and, and she's going to start and she's going to be retired for a long time. So why not, if she pulled up well and sound and everything, why not have a crack at it? It's um, still worth a bit of money and it's group two. So uh, yeah. that's the reason for backing her up firstly. Um, but she's, she's been quite, quite good through the week, you know. Uh, I think Sunday just a little bit doughy. Um, ate reasonably well on Saturday night. Um, Monday had a light trot up. Um, and you can see her progressively improve each day she's been out for a bit of a bit of a leg stretch each day and you can see her bounce starting to bounce about so uh, look we've never backed her up before that's a concern um but like it's an even race like she she's you know her and outback barbie probably the two the two horses in the race that, that have similar form lines i suppose um you know winter was very unlucky in the strab break not to run a place at least i thought um she's only got to back up the run well i feel drawn sticky again but that is what it is. We'll ride it quite. And, um, yeah, a bit of luck. We could, you know, she could run super. She'd be hitting the line. You think even backing her up might just take that. She's sometimes got that little bit of edge that lets herself down in races, but that, that might just be knocked off her and she might just settle that a little bit better too. Yeah. So, um, great beginner. And, and if she gets left in front, she can go too hard. So just the jockey just needs to, you know, bring her straight back and find a bum and, and, um, the rest is up to her then. Yeah, and absolutely. And, and she's been an absolute star for the stable, just touching on her. I know it'll be probably your last run for the stable. Um, yeah. Mate, she came from, from New South Wales, did she not? Um, came to you and, and worked through her grades right, right the way through to group level. Amazing. Yeah, it's amazing how, you know, we're all, all, all in a hurry to send fillies and mares off to start. I know breeders, you know, they've got to, you know, they've got to do the, do the right thing for their, um, obviously, um, for their sales, and, and the pedigrees and whatnot. But, you know, we've been fortunate enough. She's now six this mare and been fortunate enough for the Maloney's, Kevin and Bill and Peter, to let us tr let us, let us um, have a couple of seasons more than we normally would with her, you know. And, and you can see them improve. Um, everyone's really in a hurry to rush them off to start. And this is evidence that, that they can still race on well at five and six. And, and even um, they could even get, she could even go another year. But um, certainly we've had a good go with her and, very, very fortunate enough to, to train her and um, she's been great for the stable. Yeah, good on you guys and credit to you guys. I mean, she stayed sound and, and raced competitively and she's won $640,000 in prize money. I mean, the thing about these days with the racing on is that the prize money's there. There's so many nice carrots there to, to run for. So she's been enormous. All right, guys, there's no Sunday. So um, I'm going to hand you over to Clint Shipsey to give your best bets of the week. Remember, Tobe, you're chasing Trent. Not time to uh, time to pull out a big uh, a big win for the team this weekend. Good luck. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Bruce, uh, and welcome to Sportsbet Charity Bet of the Week. Uh, no change from last week with the tipping comp, but obviously the boys. 
got up with their first group one. So congratulations, uh, a huge effort there. So we've only got uh, three weeks left in the tipping charity challenge. So we've got $1,245 currently for M&D Australia for Trent and uh, $725 for Bravehearts Australia for Toby. So Trent, uh, who is your sports bet charity bet of the week, mate, please? Uh, I'm going to stick fat with the Vanna Girl, Clint. Brilliant. The Vanna Girl in the uh, Group 2 Roses on Saturday, Eagle Farm. And Toby, for you. I'll go say I see you at the Gold Coast tomorrow. Say I see you at the Gold Coast tomorrow. And I believe that's the uh, for the Arch Park Boys, isn't that? Isn't that that's right? it. That's it. Excellent. All right. Well, uh, there we have it. There's the top tips uh, for the weekend. Sports Bread Charity Bet of the Week. Best of luck to everybody. And don't forget, uh, guys, our owner's promotion with Sportsbet is still available. There's three weeks left. Uh, so if you have a runner tomorrow or over the, the weekend, please make sure you reach out to me via email to register your horse. Stay well. See you next week. And if you are having a bet, please gamble responsibly. Cheers, guys. Bye-bye. <laughs>